वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू द थर्ड सेशन ऑफ द चैप्टर इवेंट्स ट्राइज एंड ओ लेवल इन दिस चैप्टर वी हैव रेड अबाउट अ क्रिमिनल इवेंट्स हु वॉन्टेड टू एस्केप एंड दिस वॉज इज यूजल हैबिट ही वॉज कॉल्ड इवेंट्स द ब्रेक दिस मैन केम विद अ रिक्वेस्ट दैट ही वॉन्टेड टू अपीयर फॉर द ओ लेवल जर्मन एग्जाम एंड वॉन्टेड टू गेट सम क्वालिफिकेशन द गवर्नर ऑफ द प्रजन डिड नॉट रिफ्यूज हिम एंड ही गॉट अ चांस Before getting a chance, he was given a German tutor. He was provided with a German tutor who came from September, and the exam was supposed to be held on 8th June. 7th June, there were many things that happened. 8th June, when the day of the exam was there, 8:30 his room was arranged. 8:45 the invigilator came out. This invigilator was Ivan's friend. This was already planned. Then 8:45 this side, this side again, Jackson and Stephen King. and this time evans put two questions in front of jackson and the two questions were why did they have to put the sound recording equipment and he knew already who was the invigilator who was going to come so these were the mistakes of the governor the invigilator came after that he came inside and then the governor he was governor realized that he did not uh, thoroughly check the invigilator he called jackson jackson called macleary who was the invigilator out and after that he searched him through this manner the invigilator was able to carry the other things but he was also able to carry a rubber tube and inside the rubber tube there was blood which evans could pour over him so just imagine students if he has cut his hair already a haircut gives a different look look to a person he had cut his hair in the night then at the same time he had shaved then when he'll put the artificial beard when he'll put the spectacles when he'll put the dog collar and everything and if he pours blood over him and the next thing he was a mimicry artist would anybody be able to recognize that it was evans they would think it is macleary this was his plan so let us see how he executes this plan because i have not told you the end the only thing is that you have to see how he executed his plan and one more thing the examination it had it was supposed to begin at 9:15 and it was already 9:18 so it will begin at 9:25 it is late so does this being late matters not exactly when there is one person who is giving the exam whenever he begins the exam that doesn't matter it's a public exam that has to begin at a particular time so this examination was late but how this time matters let us see so let's see here Page number seventy-seven. It was nine eighteen a.m. before the governor heard their voices again, and it was clear that the examination was going to be more than a little late in getting underway. Macleary, you have got a watch. Now here, be careful. Evans used to say, "E is going to, E is going to." This is his pronunciation, and see Macleary's pronunciation because later on Evans has to copy this. Macleary says, "You have got a watch." Evans, yes, sir. Macleary, I'll be telling you when to start, and again when you have five minutes left. All right. So now he has this expression. All right, that sort of thing. And Evans will copy this. Then, Macleary, there's plenty more of this writing paper. Should you need it? Silence. Macleary, now write the name of the paper zero two one one in the top left hand corner. Macleary, in the top right hand corner, write your index number three one three, and in the box just below that, write your center number two seven one. All right. now you have to see this pronunciation that is there because this pronunciation marks the identity of macleary but here there are certain words do you remember the words you know they are in front of you but these words were actually the address of the hotel so evans could not know the address of the hotel so these words were telling the address of the hotel nobody noted them down but the governor was listening and he was very clever and he remembered those words then silence 9:20 am macleary i am now going to evans he is not going to stay here easy now he was referring to whom stephens because stephens was supposed to sit inside macleary i don't know about that i stephens mr jackson's given me strict instructions to evans how am i supposed to concentrate on my exam with someone breathing down my neck cry sorry sir i didn't mean to this shows you one thing that evans in this case he was objecting that stephens is sitting inside and stephens should be called outside and when stephens was called outside this was the governor's final mistake if stephens had remained inside evans could not have got that chance of exchanging clothes and getting everything from his friend now the governor reached for the phone jackson are good get stephens out of that cell will you i think we are perhaps overdoing things as you wish sir 
the governor heard the exchanges in the cell, heard the door clang once more, and heard McLeary announce that the examination had begun at last. It was 9.25 a.m. and there was a great calm. At 9.40, this question came in the board exam some five years back and you have to be careful of this question. It was 9.40, the examinations board rang through. Actually at 9.40, two phone call came, came one after the other. How did the governor react to these phone calls? Let us see. And actually these phone calls were for a definite purpose. What was that purpose? Let us see. The examinations board rang through. That means somebody from the examination board called. And the assistant secretary with special responsibility for modern languages asked to speak to the governor. The examination had already started, no doubt. A quarter of an hour ago. Somebody asked, when did the examination start? Then the governor said, quarter of an hour. Just It has just begun. Then there was a correction slip which some fool had forgotten to place in the examination package. Very brief. Could the governor please? Now there was a correction. Now, if there is a normal correction in the question paper in the school, the teacher walks in and says, okay, this is the correction. But when the examination is going on somewhere else, he said that there is a correction here. Can you note it down and pass it on to events? Now, the governor bothered. Is this a clue or something? It was a clue. That correction was the name of the hotel. Now, they could have directly done this. But if they had directly done this and McClary could have written on a page and given the name of the hotel to Evans, nobody would have come to know. But through this phone call, they could know when the exam started so that they know when the exam would get over. Otherwise, the name of the hotel could have been given and written also. So this, exa this phone call killed two birds with a single stone. What were the, these killing two birds? One was that Evans could know the name of the hotel and second was his friends could know when the exam started so that they know when the exam would get over. Are you getting? So let us go through it. It's very interesting. Yes, of course. I'll put you straight through to Mr. Jackson and Deewing. Hold the line a bit. Was this the sort of thing the governor had feared? Was the phone call a fake, some sign, some secret message? But he could check on that immediately. He dialed the number of the examination board but heard only the staccato bleeps of a line engaged. But then the line was engaged, wasn't it? Yes, not very intelligent that. He said, I'll find out whether this phone call has come from the correct place or not. If I dial, the line, was, line will be engaged. So, of course, the line was engaged because somebody from the examination board was also in, involved in Evans' escape. Two minutes later, he heard some whispered communications in the cell and then McLeary's broad Scott's voice. Will you please stop writing a wee while, Mr. Evans, and listen carefully? Candidates offering German, uh, German 0 to 1, 1 should note the following correction. On page 3, line 15, the fourth word should read goldenen, not golden, and the whole phrase will therefore read. Now, this is German. I repeat that. That was actually the name of the hotel that was the Golden Lion. The governor listened and smiled. He had taken German in the sixth form himself and he remembered all about the agreements of adjectives. And so did McLeary by the sound of things, for the minister's pronunciation was most impressive. But what about Evans? He probably didn't know what an adjective was. The phone rang again. This is the second phone call. The magistrate's court. They needed a prison van and a couple of prison officers. This you have to note down. I will not tell you now, but this you will require in the end. You will have to use your mind and this is a clue. Then, rem remand case. And within two minutes, the governor was wondering whether that could be a hoax. He told himself not to be so silly. His, his uh, imagination was beginning to run riot. Events. Now, let us see. The exam was supposed to be held for two hours. Started at 9.25 and it would get over at 11.25. So let us see what Evans did. For the first quarter of an hour, Stephens had dutifully peered through the peephole at intervals of one minute or so. What duty was Stephens given? This is Evans' cell. He was made to sit outside and after every one minute he had to see inside through that peephole. What is Evans doing? And do you notice something over here? And use the mind, a uh, sharp mind of a criminal also. Do you notice something? Uh, every two minutes at 10.45 a.m., everything was still all right as he looked through the peephole once more. It took four or five seconds, no more. What was the, what was the uh, point? It was always more or less the same. Evans, his pen between his lips, sat staring straight in front of him towards the door, seeking, it seemed, some solely needed inspiration from somewhere. He had put his pen in the lips. Now, students, if an, if an exam, uh, examinee is writing, 
like me i mean the student is writing the student should be writing the exam and here he was with his pen he was just staring like that so stephen should have noted this irregularity and reported it to jackson he did not and that was his mistake then and opposite him macleary seated slightly askew from the table now his face in semi profile his fair his face as stephens had noted earlier amateurishly clipped pretty close to the scalp his eyes behind the pebble lenses peering short sightedly at the church times his right index finger hooked beneath the narrow clerical collar and the fingers of the left hand the nails meticulously manicured slowly stroking the short thick beard black beard now what was he doing he was looking at the newspaper like that at the same time one finger was here the reason that time is because he was wearing two dog collars and two clerical fronts and they were slipping how can you hold it in one collar itself they were slipping and that time he had put it so that they don't slip and the next thing he had one bed and we had put one artificial bed to remove and give it to events so that was also moving and he had kept his hand here then at 10:50 am the receiver crackled to life and the governor realized he had almost forgotten evans for a few minutes evans please sir a whisper evans please sir evans would you mind if i put a blanket round me shoulder sir it's a bit parky parky chilly silence evans there's one on me bunk here sir evans be quick about it now here what happened he said that he wants to wear a blanket so that under the blanket he can equally very easily take the things from macleary and wear them here the top collar then the clerical front everything at 10:51 am stephens was more than a little surprised to see a gray regulation blanket draped around evans's shoulders and he frowned slightly and looked at the examinee more closely but evans the pen still between his teeth he was not writing at all then Stare, uh, staring just as vacantly as before blankly beneath a blanket should stephens report the irregularity anything at all fishy hadn't jackson said he looked through the people once again and even as he did so evans pulled the dirty blanket more closely to himself was he planning a sudden batman leap to suffocate macleary in the blanket don't be daft he was talking to himself he said was he going to suffocate macleary but then he told himself don't be crazy he cannot do it here There was never any sun on this side of the prison no heating either during the summer months and it could get quite chilly in some of the cells stephens decided to revert to his earlier every minute observation and then the time of the end of the exam came that we will do in the next session thank you